Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. Stories start in many different ways. This one began with a Halloween killing and ended with a black cat's sweet revenge. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Yes, Halloween had come and gone, but tonight was still a good night for any leftover spooks, witches, or black cats as the hallowed eve itself. The rain came down like a million little hammers as I sloshed down the street. It was a tough night to be out, but I had to have a story for tomorrow morning's paper, and the public isn't interested if you get your feet wet doing it. Tonight, I was digging in the garbage of Chicago for a yard. The Madison District. Wooden houses had leaned crazily to one side, apartment houses put together with spit and orange crates. Great spot for a cynic. It was on the corner of Martin Street. Two or three shadowy figures stood staring at a big, ugly black cat on the street. It walked around in circles like some demented thing, its yellow eyes catching the light from the street lamp above. An old man was trying to coax it away. You got to come home with me. I got milk for you. Honest, I have. And a warm fire. You, you like to be warm, don't you? Well, that cat's gone crazy all the time. I wouldn't go near it if I were you. Yeah, she's been acting like that since she took Nick Corby's body away almost an hour ago. Don't let anyone near her. Well, they shouldn't have done it. Nick won't like Tilly standing out here in the rain. I won't mind too much, Mike. Him being dead. Uh, come on, Pop. I'll take you home. The cat will come in after a while. They killed him, and Tilly knows who done it. Ain't you going to tell me who done it, Tilly? What's with that old guy? Yeah, it'll off. Harmless, though. What about this Corby? I went out for a walk with a cat. Somebody heisted him, took his dough, and left a bullet hole in his head. Good exchange, yeah. Cops get anything at all? Nah, I didn't bother much. Asked a few questions and shoveled them into the meat wagon. I call her and she won't come. Well, well, well. Well, I guess I'll be moving on. Yeah, me too. Hey, you want to know something? Yeah, always. Just to give you a laugh, you look just like him. Like who? You look just like Nick Corby. Before or after the bullet? So I plugged up the hole in my head and started walking away. Nothing here for me. Another Madison Street special. Guy robbed and killed. He'll stay dead, and the man with the gun will go on living. I'd gone five or six yards when I heard someone calling. Hey, mister, mister. Hmm? Oh, what is it, Pop? Tilly, Tilly, she's following you. There she is. You, you see her? Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, so she is. <laughs> Come here, you scrawny thing. Oh. Hey, hey, this ugly old doll's going for me. Oh, she likes you. What's the matter, Tilly? Things are getting tough. Hey, will you pick her up and take her to my place? All right, Pop. All right, where do you live? Right here, the Martin apartment. Okay. Up you come, you black banshee. The three steps going down. Here, in the basement. I'm the janitor here. Come in and warm up a bit. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. Here's your cat. I've got to get moving. Uh, Tilly don't want you to go. <laughs> you had not to. She don't want you to. You tell her I'm practically engaged to someone else. <laughs> so long. I'd like to have accepted the old man's invitation to stay in for a short talk with him and the cat, but there didn't seem to be any room for the three of us. So I walked back upstairs, flagged a cab, and sank down on the seat. But before the driver could close the door, something jumped at me and landed in my lap. There was the cat. Uh, driver, just a minute. Now, what is it? I gotta take this cat back. I'll be out in a few minutes. Now look, mister, I'm losing fares. On a night like this, everyone wants a cat. I ain't waiting. Nice boy. Come on, Tilly. Mike, hey. here, come take the cat. She went after you, and I couldn't stop her. She liked you. And when she likes a man, she don't let go of him. That's the way it was with Nick. That's no use. You can't get away from her. Maybe she thinks you're Nick. Oh, you look a lot like him, a lot. I'll show her my birth certificate sometimes. Mike. Huh? Mike, what are you doing with that gun? Oh, I'm cleaning it. You got to clean them all the time. They don't work. 
As a soldier, now I ought to know you got to clean him and clean him. Look, look, Mike, if the cat won't stay with you, why don't you take it back to Nick Corby's wife? I wouldn't do that. Mrs. Corby's afraid of the cat. She even tried to kill her once, but Tilly was too smart. <laughs> Mrs. Corby tried to kill Nick, too. How do you know? Nick told me. He was my friend. He played checkers with me. And you know what? He didn't call me Crazy Mike like the rest of them. He gave me his gun to keep for him after that time Mrs. Corby shot at him. Is that the one you're cleaning now? No. His is his head. Mm-hmm. Uh, where does Mrs. Corby live? Oh, right here in this building. Did you know? Number 18. Well, maybe I'll go up and have a talk with you. You lock Tilly in the other room. I'll go up and see her. You ain't gonna tell her, are you? Tell her what? That I'm gonna kill her. All Mike wasn't gonna do any killing with that gun. I hadn't liked the vacant look in his eyes and the tight lines around his mouth, so while we'd been talking, I'd slip the magazine into my pocket. But it still left him pretty dangerous. So I thought I'd better go up and have a talk with Mrs. Corby. Who's there? Mr. Stone. Oh, Come in. I'm so glad you came. Sit down. Thank you. Say, you don't look like a policeman. I'm not. I'm a reporter. Did the police send you? Oh, not exactly. Oh, I might have known. What's another killing to them when it happens on Madison? Who am I to ask for protection? Who am I to be worried about a crazy man saying he's going to kill me? Well, maybe I can help. Can you bring back my husband? And you bring him back so that he'll pay the rent every month and see that I have something to eat and a dress to wear? And you bring back the feeling I had of belonging to someone? That's the way it was till the cat came. That's who killed him. The cat? Yes. He said he was going out tonight. I told him. Now, I told him, go, go, Nick. Now, don't you go or... Or what? Nothing. She couldn't stand seeing us happy. He put his arms around me. That cat would come whining and scratching at me, hating me with everything in her. Oh, look, Mrs. Corby, you're upset now. Always talking and whispering to each other till I, I go crazy mad. Nick stroking her and the cat purring and mocking me. I tried to poison her. I tried to shoot her. But I couldn't. She, she's too clever. Well, the police will get out at Mrs. Corby in a few days. The whole thing will blow over. I told them who did it. They said they'd look into it, but they won't till it's too late. That's the way the cops work around here. I'm kind of confused, lady. Just, just who is it you're talking about? Mike. Mike? Did he kill your husband? Why? Because he's crazy, that's why. Talking soft and low one minute and the next a raving maniac. He'll kill me, too, if the police don't stop him. What's that? It's only the cat at the window. Get away from there! You sneaking, lying thing of... I'll kill you. I will. You hear? Take hold of yourself, lady. Take hold of yourself. It's only a cat. A cat? It's a she-devil. A scheming, rotten she-devil. Now you get away or I'll throw her. She picked up the empty bottle and threw it at the window and the cat disappeared. For a few minutes, I thought Mrs. Corby had gone out of her mind. I finally quieted her down. She wouldn't let me leave her at first. But when I told her I was just going to bring the police back, she locked herself in the room and told me to hurry. When I got out into the hallway, old Mike was standing by, an empty grin on his face. Hmm. Carrying on, wasn't she? What were you doing up here? Just listening. I like to hear people yell. Well, you come on downstairs. I want to talk to you. I made some tea for us. I like tea. Mm -hmm. How did Tilly get out? I opened the door and out she came. Uh-huh. Did you want her to scare Mrs. Corby? Yeah. yeah. Worked good, didn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mike, Mike, tell me, did you like scaring people or is it just Mrs. Corby? Uh, here's your tea. I like tea. Thanks, Mike. Mrs. Corby don't like old Mike. She thinks I'm crazy. You? You think I'd be here talking about important things if I thought you were? Yeah, we got important things to talk about. Mike, why do you want to kill Mrs. Corby? Mm, she's a bad woman. Always running around with that Mr. Baydell. You know, the one that plays the music. And Nick didn't like that? No, Nick didn't like the music man. He hit him once, made him bleed all over. Oh, when was this? Day for yesterday. They was fighting about Nick's wife. And Mr. Baydell said, I'll kill you for this. 
Do you think he did? On a dark corner, in the rain, when nobody was watching, they'd done it to him. And I got to kill her for that. And him, too. I'll tell you what, Mike. I'll go down and get the police here, and they'll look after it. You know what? I lost part of my gun, and I can't use it. Well, you won't need it. I'm going for the cops. Oh, it takes him too long. I'll do it with Nick's gun. I got it hid for him. Where is it? I hid it good. It's under my bed. It's in this box. Now, let me take a look at it. Oh, it ain't here. It's, It's gone. You are listening to Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. What's big? Well, the Grand Canyon is tremendous. Mount Everest is gigantic. And the big show is colossal. The big show, an hour and a half of the very best in comedy, music, and drama. Tallulah Bankhead is mistress of ceremonies, and your stars for this Sunday's premiere include Jimmy Durante, Fred Allen, Ethel Merman, Meredith Wilson, Frankie Lane, and many, many more. The Big Show will be heard for an hour and a half every Sunday on NBC, starting this Sunday. And now back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. The old man's face went white when he couldn't find Nick's gun, and I could see a crazy rage coming to a boil. I don't mind telling you that I was scared. And then suddenly there was an explosion that seemed to come from the basement window. Somebody was shooting at us. I pulled Mike down to the floor. For a minute, I thought Mike had been hit, but he was only dazed and maybe scared. Uh, 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 they want to get me before I get them. Oh, Mike, who? She don't like me, and Mr. Baydale don't like me. Where does he live? Next door, in the room and house. Well, I'm going to talk to him. Don't leave this room, and you'll be all right. Understand me? Oh, but where's Tilly? I, I ain't seen Tilly. The cat will be all right. You just stay here. On the third floor of the rooming house, I heard accordion music coming from behind one of the closed doors. I knocked on it. Come in. I pushed the door open. I stood looking at a guy in his middle 40s wrestling with an old accordion. One look and I was sure he wasn't the man of distinction. There was a cloudy glass of muscatel sitting on a dirty table at his side. His tongue was a little thick when he spoke. A music lover, no doubt. I see that your clothes are soaking wet. Just come in out of the rain, maybe, a few minutes ago. Do I detect a tone of authority in your voice? Let me guess. Policeman? No. I'm greatly relieved. They frown so on musicians who've slid from concert hall to bar room, from a Steinway to an accordion. Who are you? I'm Randy Stone, Chicago star. Ah, yes, the star. Your paper was kind to me in, uh, in happier days. I dare say you want an interview, uh, one of those what's become of stories. Oh, I'm sorry I can't oblige. I'm composing at the moment. Look, Mr. Baydell, I have a few questions I'd like answered. Ah, but haven't we all? Question number one. Have you, in the past 15 minutes, fired a revolver? That's simple. No. Mind if I look around? Not at all. Hmm. Now, what's the use? You could have ditched the gun. Perhaps you would like to hear my newest work. I'm more interested in Nick Corby at the moment. Ah, lucky fellow. To be shot down, destroyed without a moment's warning. No remorse. A shot and one less specimen of misery in the world. You rather think I did it, don't you, Mr. Stone? From what I'm given to understand, you're a likely candidate. Poor demented Mike has been talking to you. Do you believe him? I suppose you were composing when he was shot. I've been rehearsing the answer to that question all evening. I know it so well, I could set it to music. Well, I'll take it straight. I was with Mrs. Corby when the news came in. In fact, I opened the door for the policeman. Mrs. Corby will swear to that, I suppose. Indeed, she will. (laughs) Fine person, Mrs. Corby. Now, Mr. Stone, before you go, perhaps you'd be interested in buying an etude I've recently finished. For one dollar... Ah, sell it to the cops. You'll be seeing them pretty soon. Will you please send one that can play oboe? I've written a variation in A minor for accordion and oboe that goes like this. (laughs) 
I don't know. I seem to have a knack of getting mixed up with offbeat characters. They fascinate me like a stage door fascinates some Johnnies. And I get to know what makes a guy tick, even if it means ducking a couple of bullets. There wasn't much doubt in my mind that either old Mike or Mr. Baydell had helped Corby out of this world. And even though they were interesting characters, they were both dangerous, and it kind of burned me up that the cops hadn't done anything about them. Mrs. Corby wanted protection, and she was entitled to it. So I hopped into a cab and went down to headquarters. Sergeant Kelly was playing four-handed canasta all by himself. Hi. How about some canasta? How about a little murder? On a night like this? Now, this is an old one. Three hours ago, Nick Corby. Oh, him. Boy's just finished on him. You got the report? Not a written one, but I know all the stuff. Shot through the temple, very close range. He was robbed. Bad spot, that Martin Avenue. What kind of gun was used? Forty-five. Mm-hmm. Should have seen that neat, round little hole in his head. Looked like a bomb crater. Mrs. Corby feels her life is in danger and asks for protection. How come she didn't get it? Swanson told me about her. She's nuts. Talked about a cat killing her. Then some harmless old guy she wanted pulled. Some old droller. She's nuts. Well, she asked for something she's entitled to. And that harmless old man, somebody took a couple of shots at him. Why didn't somebody tell her? Well, I'm telling you now. You're going to send some boys down right away? You guys are going to get a blasting from my paper if you don't. What are you all worked up about? A guy was killed, that's all, and a couple of nuts with guns are on the loose, that's all. Our boys questioned them and couldn't see no reason for doing more than they did. Now, be reasonable, Stone. Are you going to get someone down there, or do I start writing? Uh, I'll do what I can. Good. And Randy. Yeah? If, uh, you're going to start writing, be sure you spell my name with two L's. When I got back to Mike's place in the basement, he was gone. While waiting for him, I rummaged around a bit just to keep busy and see what I could find. I didn't even hear the door open, but then... Uh-oh. You won't find it. Oh, uh... Hello, Mike. What won't I find? What you're looking for? Who Mike knows. What do you know? He knows who killed Nick. He knows for sure now. Who was it? Mr. Baydell. He done it. How do you know it was him? I found the gun in his room. Nick's gun with three bullets missing. One for Nick and two for me. That's how I know. Let me see it, Mike. I got it hid good this time. That's fine. That's fine. We'll give it to the police when they come, won't we? No. Nick wants me to do it myself. He wouldn't show me the gun or tell me where he'd hidden it. And the look on his face told me that whatever was left of his brain was concentrating on what he was going to do. I ran next door and back upstairs to warn the musician. He was gone. The landlady told me, try the bar on the corner. The storm had got a new lease on life, and I was glad to close the door of that bar behind me. The place was empty, but for the bartender and my friend with the accordion. Live one. What'll it be? A little conversation with Shostakovich over there. Tell the gentleman I have nothing to discuss with him. He is not a patron of the arts. You heard him. Mr. Baydell, you've got to get out of here. Then tell the man what my terms are for conversation. You've got to buy him a drink. Oh, he's had enough. A small subsidy of 50 cents may buy you a piece of posterity through my compositions. Yeah... Better buy him a drink, mister. He gets stubborn. All right, all right, then. Make it quick. Thank you. I will now dedicate to you... Look, Mr. Bidell, any minute now, that door may open and you... How dare you interrupt me in the middle of a presentation? Well... You, Marimma, you'll get no place. I'm very sorry. Go ahead. Bartender, keep your eye on that door. The piece I have selected for you is a bit of American minstrelsy. Two lovers stood on the corner. Above them, the street lamp shone. A shot rang out through the dismal night, and the dead man lay alone. Oh, that's just great. Now listen to me. Mike found the gun in your room, the one that was used to kill Corby with. Uh, That's why they call him Crazy Mike. 
His retarded mentality makes his hallucinations so very powerful. And all with no aid from Bacchus, the god of wine. But don't sell a guy like that short. They kill a lot quicker than the ordinary person. Ah, listen to that storm. A fine night for death. A fine night for sweet oblivion. Did he show you the gun? No, but I know he's got it. And he found it in my room? Yes. Sweet, faded traitress. She put it there. What do you mean? Nothing. I'm closing up, boys. <coughs> I'm going tonight. Probably be another power failure before long anyway. All right, if you're smart, you'll come with me to police headquarters. It'll go a lot easier with you if you don't wait to be picked up. No, I may be better served this way. Mike is looking for me? Yeah. Then I shall walk home slowly and perhaps on the same corner under the same streetlight. Uh, complexities may become peace. The struggle ended. Yes, I, I like it this way. Look, mister, you're a sick man, a very sick man. On the contrary, I can't remember when I felt better. Good night, sir. Ten more minutes, and I close shop. I'll stay till then. Good night again, Mr. Stone. The guy was mad. Didn't I say something about Halloween? Well, I had the two spooks, Crazy Mike and Mr. Baydell. I had the black cat, too. All I needed for the repeat performance was a witch and a broomstick. I got back to Mike's basement rooms, thinking I'd stay with him till the boys from headquarters got there. Mike! Mike ain't here. Who are you? Randy Stone, Chicago Star. Ah, oh, Charlie told me he'd be around. Well, I'm glad you got here. Did you take Mike in? I couldn't find him. I'm waiting here for he'll show up. He's got a gun. He's planning to use it. Uh, Kelly's upstairs talking to Mrs. Corby now. Well, one of you guys better get down to the corner bar and keep your eye on the accordion player named Baydell. Yeah? Who's he? That's the guy Mike is going to kill. Well, I can't leave here. Maybe you better tell Kelly to go after Baydell and you stay with Miss Corby. <laughs> He'll be plenty happy to get out of there. She's driving him nuts about that black cat. Have you seen the cat? No. I heard him yowling outside and went out and looked around, but she was gone. <laughs> Kelly let me into Mrs. Corby's room. He was looking pleased with himself. Hello, Stone. Oh, you. Well, we're getting places on this thing, aren't we, Mrs. Corby? Well... I convinced her to give me some of the real facts, didn't I? And it comes out that she don't think Crazy Mike done it. Do you, Mrs. Corby? I... I... I Mr. Baydell? Just... How do you know? Mike found the gun in his room. Three bullets fired. Where's the gun? Where's the gun? Mike's got it. He's looking for Baydell to give him the rest of the bullets in the head. That's not so good. We got a man at Baydell's room waiting for him to come home. He's at the bar on the corner. I'll go get him. You stay here with Mrs. Corby. All right. Well, Eddie, it looks like your worries are all over. Now, you promised to take the cat, too. There we go again with the cat. Okay, we'll take her. I'll be back in a few minutes. There, keep the door locked, Stone. Okay. You didn't tell me about your boyfriend before, Mrs. Corby. I tried to shield him. I, I knew they wouldn't do much to old Mike. Why did he kill him? Nick made fun of him. And, uh, Mr. Baydell wanted me for himself. He told me he was with you when the police came to tell you about the shooting. He'd come in about two minutes before they did and made me say it. He came up the fire escape through this window. Well, it'll be over in a few minutes. It will if they take the cat away. If they don't, you... Oh. Who's that? You're doomed, lover. Open up. Oh, don't let him in. I've got to. I've got to hold him for the police. Your persistence would have done you well in the musical field, young man. You're not doing so bad yourself. I saw a rather heavy set gentleman searching for me. You sent him, no doubt? No doubt, and he'll be back. And Mike, where's he? He disappointed me keenly. I waited and waited for him on the corner. Uh, by the way, has my true love told you all? Yeah. Did the sweet, tone-deaf person tell you that she was insanely jealous of her husband's relations with a black cat? Don't believe it, Mr. Stone. How come, Vedel? Fifteen minutes ago, you were ready to let Mike get you. Now you're singing a different tune. Mike disappointed me. I would gladly have paid on the street corner. But in a stinking jail? No, I'd rather not. Oh, don't listen to him. He's crazy. You're wasting your time. Did the lady tell you that she came in through the fire escape three or four minutes after the shot was heard? Well, let it go. I'm not the judge or the jury. Oh, very well. Then let us sit here and just listen to the story. That's frightening. It's only thunder. The lights. The lights are out! Now, cut the hysteria. It's only a power failure. They'll be on in a few minutes. Oh, quiet, please. The beauty of darkness was never more necessary than now. 
What's that? Probably the police. Who is it? Just Mike. Oh, the cat. Take it away, Mike. Mike, please take it away. The lady's rival. Hi, Mike. Come on, old timer. Give me that gun. Stay where you are. Don't move. None of you. I can't see you in the dark, but I'll shoot at the first thing that moves. The cat. She's looking at me. Oh, Mike, take her away. Mike, the police are downstairs. They've come to straighten everything out. It didn't call me crazy. Uh, poor old Mike, he can't see in the dark room, but Tilly can. <laughs> can't you? Tilly, Tilly. Tilly will show me where he is so I can shoot him. Mike, Mike, I'm afraid of her. If she touches me. Don't bother <laughs> you, Mrs. Corby. Mike, I'm coming to that window, and you'll give me that gun. Uh, I got a bullet for you, too, if I have to. Stay where you are. Tilly. Tilly. He was there with Nick when it happened. You can see him. You just walk over to him, Tilly, and I'll, I'll see your eyes in the dark. Tilly. Then I'll know where to shoot. She's, she's coming down. I watched with a horrible fascination as the cat landed on the floor. She looked around the room carefully, her yellow eyes flashing with hate. Don't let her touch me. Don't. I can't stand it. Easy, Mrs. Corby. You'll excite Mike. She's going to spring at me. I can't stand it. Mike, take her away. I did it. I killed him. Isn't that what you want to know? <laughs> now take her away. Take her away. <laughs> Mike fired straight at Mrs. Corby, but somehow his shot went wild. And then it was all over. Kelly'd been working his way up the fire escape, and he got Mike from behind. <laughs> Okay, okay, old timer. Let me have the gun. Uh, we evened up for him, didn't we, Tilly? Uh, we evened up for Nick. Come on, Pop. I'm coming. Uh, just a minute now. You, you listen. Uh, hear that? Tilly's happy now. <laughs> She's happy now. <laughs> we got her all right. She made me do it. That cat. She hated me, and she made me kill him. <laughs> The boys took over and there was nothing left for me to do. Mrs. Corby turned out to be the missing witch in my Halloween ball. She'd taken the shots at Mike and then planted the gun in old Baydell's room. I walked the broken down musician home. I felt I owed him an apology. I'm sorry about tonight. Everybody makes mistakes and I picked tonight to make the one of mine. I made a bigger mistake than you did, Mr. Stone. And what was that? When Mike was at the window, I should have shouted, Here I am. But he would have killed you. Yes. Good night, Mr. Stone. Good night, sir. Yeah, I've got a talent for getting mixed up with weird characters. Three out of the four were wacky. Off their rockers. Old Mike, Mrs. Corby, Baydell, the accordion player. And the fourth character, of course, is me. And you know what? I'm not so sure about him either. No. Am I, Tilly girl? Hmm. I would have sworn that cat said something. Copy, boy. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and edited and directed by Warren Lewis. Tonight's script was written by Lou Russoff with music by Frank Worth. The part of Mrs. Corby was played by Lorene Tuttle. Mike was Will Gear. Others in tonight's cast were June Foray, Tudor Owen, Ken Christie, Lamont Johnson, and Lou Krugman. Frank Lovejoy will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers adventure drama Breakthrough. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Here is a special listening note for all of you who enjoy following along step-by-step step with Randy Stone as he covers the Night Beat. Starting next Friday, November 10th, Night Beat will be heard exactly one half hour earlier over most of these stations. Next week, in this time period, you'll hear the premiere of a new series starring Monty Woolley as the Magnificent Montague. Remember, next Friday, Night Beat will be heard one half hour earlier. Consult your local papers for the exact time. Tallulah Bankhead as Fem C brings you the big show Sunday on NBC.